Hey, welcome back to Who Win. Today's Who Win comes to us from Anita, who asked the question, and I I went, looked through the suggestions I had to see if anyone did give me the suggestion beyond just Anita. I want to say someone did, but I just couldn't find it. Uh, is Who Win a Fight? The T-1000 Terminator versus General Grievous from Star Wars franchise. The T-1000 is, was basically an upgrade from, both the T, from all the T models before, including... The Arnold Schwarzenegger T-800 from the first movie, the T-850, which the T-1000 fought, and is the model you see uh, uh, later on throughout the series. And the T-900, which, if I remember correctly, which ones are the T-900s? The T-900s, I think, incorporated a little bit of the liquid metal, but it wasn't perfected yet. Let's see now, T-900? One second, one second. Uh, 900. Uh, T-900... Okay, yeah, they're, so the T-900s are Rise of Machine Time. Those, those do exist. In fact, I think that might, that's not the TX, no. Uh, but the T900s do exist. And basically, they are bas they're not techno-organic. They're just liquid metal robots. I mean, they're basically very little tiny nanorobots into liquid, uh, in the liquid metal. Hence why you still get like the AI and things along those lines. Uh, they're basically just as intelligent as any other Terminator. I mean, they have the wealth of Skynet's knowledge at their disposal. Plus the ability to mute, transmutate their body, transmutate, transform their bodies into pretty much anything. As long as it's non-complex, so no explosives or guns or lightsaber, um, you can't really change. It can morph into objects, but it can't like change its material. So you're not going to see it turn into crystal or anything like that. It can only stay metal, but it can make axes, spears, just in extend its limbs to a certain extent. Um, and, you know, phase through like bars and stuff with no problem, and you know, spikes. The whole the whole shebang. Uh, but really, what's more impressive is just how hard it is to kill a T-1000. Unlike the normal Terminators or the previous models, T, basically, the T's 1 through 199, if you will, the uh, the T-1000, because it's liquid, technically speaking, can't be destroyed by conventional means. You can slow it down with firearms, guns, uh, you know, guns, weaponry, things along those lines, Blunt force objects that you can hit it and you will slow it down temporarily, but it'll just reform its structure and mass. You know, you blow holes in it, that'll just morph out. You cut a limb off, it will just, yeah, you know, it just reattach itself. You blow into tiny bits, the bits will just collect together and just reform the Terminator. The T1000's main weaknesses, at least in its own continuity, again, if you went to like reality warpers and stuff like that, sure, it would lose. Um, but the T1000's main weakness seems to be extreme temperatures and chemical, um, Oh, damage. So extreme temperatures like freezing cold, uh, like liquid nitrogen, freeze it, destroy it. There you go. Like, well, it doesn't destroy it, but it freezes it so solid that it's not going to be able to do anything uh, until it melts back down to a room temperature. Likewise, uh, when it, it was destroyed in the first movie, or the second movie, the first movie it showed up in, destroyed in Judgment Day by falling into a vat of liquid metal and being dissolved. So, extreme temperatures can work. Uh, in Terminator Genesis, the T-1000 that was chasing them in that timeline was defeated by um, a huge amount of battery acid basically being poured onto it uh, and basically dissolving it down on a chemical uh, on a chemical ground. So, extreme temperatures uh, can damage and uh, hurt it and possibly destroy it, and chemicals like as highly corrosive acids will also take care of it. I would have to imagine like things like plasma weapons... Um, High explosives that would vaporize it, hypothetically speaking. Uh, magnetism. Not, we Actually, we've seen that magnetism can affect it in some way. So, things along those lines can definitely hurt it as well. General Grievous. Though Grievous is not his actual name. If I remember correctly, let me get his information up real quick here. Uh, General Grievous was from Wikipedia, of all things. Uh, General Grievous, his actual name was... Uh, uh, or excuse me. Grievous was his actual name. But was a male a Kalish male warlord who served in commanding the officer of military uh, Confederates independence. He uh, they wanted him to be more powerful, but he didn't want to you know be a pawn. But they basically the emperor and duke arranged for his shit to be destroyed. He was saved and put into a cybernetic body, aka what you see in the films. Even beforehand, even before he became a cyborg, he was a dangerous warrior, like a very dangerous warrior. Uh, like like he was. He was able to outflank Jedi even beforehand. And to be able to outflank Jedi in just a military a sense is seriously impressive. Um, as, uh, just, just because of how capable Jedi are. He's also a famed Jedi. One of the biggest things that he's known for is the fact that he's a famed Jedi killer. 
um, uh, a, is that he's killed God knows how many Jedi. He used to have a collection of Sith lightsabers, red crystal lightsabers. Um, uh, <laughs> oh, I say, I'm sorry. A bird flew into the yard. I like a blue jay. Uh, but yeah, he's a fit. I just lost my, oh, he used to have some red lightsabers, but unfortunately, yeah, they were destroyed on, oh God. Um, mm -hmm. It's the place where the Night Sisters and honestly where Duke uh, where uh, Maul's from, and it's blank. I'm blanking on the name, and it's bothering me uh, how that happened. At least in the legend, that's what happened. But I mean, until he was given lightsaber, killed the Jedi, I think with his bare hands, took his lightsaber, and he basically keeps the lightsabers of his kills as his collection and uses them obviously. Uh, despite being not force sensitive, he is highly skilled lightsaber combatant and was trained by Dooku himself. His cybernetic enhancements give him enhanced strength and agility to combat Jedi. He's also a master tactician, quick to adapt, plus he's got a bit of a computer in his brain as well, so that helps him as well. Uh, because he has four arms he can, and can move at, at speeds that are actually, you know, hard to keep up, even by Jedi standards, he is notorious for being able to take out multiple opponents and Jedi at once. Durable enough with the cybernetics that you can even resist uh, explosions from fuel barrels, and apparently his armor is so durable, durable it can survive um, blaster fire from like giant space cannons from ships. Uh, not only was he fast, but he had enhanced strength, was able to pick up, throw, smash, and choke and crush his opponents. He was also a com competent strategist, obviously we know this. Uh, Grievous is also skilled in uh, firearms. He did, uh, did usually carry a firearm with him if he had the opportunity. Uh, Jurius is not only skilled in lightsaber combat, but as I said, owned a custom, uh, blaster, a DT-57 Annihilator pistol called the Grievous Striker. The Grievous is also a talented flyer and piloted a customized 22 Starfighter known as the Soulless One. He's skilled enough to avoid and escape Anakin Skywalker's Starfighter, which is severely impressive as it is Anakin Skywalker. Now, when talking about this fight, first let's assume for a minute that, you know, Galaxy Far, a long time ago, Galaxy Far, Far Away is a bit loose. And let's say that uh, the Empire has been creating a new droid. Because the Terminator would essentially be a droid. And the T-1000 is it. And they're testing the T-1000 out. And Grievous just happens to be the um, testee. And basically they, are, basically they say to each other, they tell him, okay, go out. Both of you are, are being ordered to kill the other. Or so I see. That's the way it is. Fine. Dro I, I will not be replaced by some droid. And the T-1000 just like, order confirmed. Now, in terms of how the T-1000 looks in this universe, anyone's... I just have the Robert Patrick up there, uh, picture up there because it's the most known version of the T-1000. There's been plenty of them in like the expanded lore, plus we had a different one in uh, Genesis. Um, but... Yeah, I just went with that. But he can look like anyone. So maybe he just looks like an uh, Imperial of some kind. That happens to look like Robert Robert Patrick. There you go. So, you know, General Grievous comes in and, you know, initially he just, you know, strikes at the T-1000 and just boom, absorbs it and just kind of starts to integrate a little bit with his with Cybernetics. But Grievous pulls back and just sends it flying, scrapes off the T-1000 a little bit. T-1000 then goes into combat mode and starts slicing at Grievous. Now, Grievous is durable enough to survive blaster fire, Low-level explosions, point blank, and even cannon fire, fire to some degree. So, like, just melee alone isn't going to be enough to take out Grievous. But, Grievous, like I said, because it's a liquid metal and machine, a sentient machine, it is capable of integrating with other technology. It could very well integrate with uh, uh, Grievous' cybernetics. And, indeed, that's what it starts to try to do until Grievous pulls out a lightsaber and immediately chops off its arm and immediately, you know, you know kind of points to a part that's still on him and starts, you know, uh, flushing out, uh, flushing it out of his uh, uh, cybernetics because it's reacting to the heat. Now, this is where the ultimate question is going to have to be answered. Is a lightsaber capable of taking out a T-1000? Because remember what a lightsaber ultimately is. Uh, a lightsaber, um, in one second here, let me, uh, do, 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 do. Let me, uh, I want to actually get a, I mean, I know what a lightsaber is, obviously, but I'd like to actually have a legitimate, de since I'm on Wikipedia, um, I'd like to have at least a general definition of the term lightsaber. Uh, a lightsaber basically creates, it's not a beam of light, obviously. It's not an actual beam of light. But what it is, it's a concentrated beam of plasma. And lightsaber, there we go. Lightsaber, Wikipedia, please. Uh, do, 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 do. No, I don't need like places to buy lightsabers, although that is something else entirely for a different day. Then I'm not going to say to not ruin things. Um, 
lightsaber wookie oh uh, yeah there we go lightsaber wiki that's what i need a lightsaber just to get the legitimate definition also referred to as a laser sword um it's the what, what lightsabers consist of a plasma bait powered by a kyber, uh, kyber crystal that is emitted uh, from a usually anvil hilt and it could be shot off at will. The weapon is required uh, skill and training and a greatly enhanced user's conjunction with the force. Uh, lightsabers are generally are used for both offense and defense. Lightsaber cut through virtually anything from flesh to blaster doors. The only ways to block the incoming attack of a lightsaber was a weapon made of a, uh, with material that conducted energy, such as an electro staff. A Z6 not uh, or a Z6 riot control baton. Some rare metals are another or another lightsaber. When used defensively, it could uh, deflect blaster bolts with a lightsaber with a, and with skill, even to re uh, reflect the shot back towards the shooter. Point being is that it is a concentrated blade of plasma, something very much capable of taking out the T1000. But the thing is, the T1000 was destroyed initially because it was basically bathing in a vat of liquid metal at a heat that it couldn't. Its body couldn't com comprehend and couldn't um, um, uh, compensate for. With lightsaber, Grievous initially, yeah, it's going to carve it and it's probably not going to be able to reform immediately. At least, like, parts of it are going to be completely damaged, like, permanently damaged. So, enough, sh like, slashes are going to permanently take out the T-1000. But the amount of slashes needed for that to actually happen would probably too be too much, uh, too many. And I do think the T-1000 would eventually overcome, maybe just kind of overwhelm, bum-rush Grievous, Grievous, and just kind of, like, overall just blow his joints off. But Grievous isn't dumb. By any, in fact, Grievous is pretty much a tactical genius. He would realize that he's not really getting anywhere by cutting it, even with a lightsaber. But he realizes that there is, like, permanent damage. And, like, some of the bits of the T-1000 are, like, gone. Like, burnt to charge to the ground. Even when it reforms. So it's losing mass. Grievous quickly realizes that what it ne he needs to do is keep the lightsaber in the T-1000. T-1000 comes again. He actually allows it to get close enough. This time he just holds the lightsaber in the T-1000. Now, T-1000 could, in theory, like vacate make a hole large enough to you know keep like let's say my arm is, let's say my finger is the lightsaber okay i'm not gonna use that motion um let's say my arm is a lightsaber right? a circle wider than my uh, arm in this case the blade um uh <clears throat> uh it that basically keeps the blade from actually touching the problem is is that the t1000 for all its shape shifting capabilities can't react that fast like, Grievous can move at pretty much near light speed reflexes, for a machine anyway. He was able to compete with individuals like Windu in their expanded lore, who are master swordsmen and Jedi. So, and early, they even said Obi-Wan's the only one who could really defeat Grievous because of his defensive uh, style. Uh, because Grievous can just move faster, he can easily just quickly get in there and just start, uh, just uh, pretty much just welding him, uh, welding him to death, pretty much, just shearing him and uh, melting him down. What really, I think, does it for the T-1000 in this fight, honestly, because I think in a good chunk of the scenarios, the T-1000 can overwhelm Grievous, basically just integrate itself with his technology real quick, and then just, like, rip him apart. But the problem is, is that Grievous is at least as fast, if not faster, than T-1000, and has a weapon on call that could that would be, frankly, tailor-made to taking out a T-1000. It's just a matter of using it in the right way to take out the T-1000, which I do believe Grievous would, uh, would do, Add on to the fact that he has at least four of these things he can use, plus any extras that he keeps on his person. So, really, it's not just, it, that's, it's not like uh, the T-1000 is just avoiding one blade. One blade, I think the T-1000 might actually be able to figure out a way to kind of avoid overall. Four of them? Uh-uh. Because he's got to focus on four separate points. That's not going to work. Travis is just going to eventually just go, and just start shooting, like, mixing him up, and just, and then the T-1000 just burns to death and dies. So ultimately, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to say that it's Grievous who wins this fight. Though again, if I were to go over percentage, which I don't do that much anymore, I'd say it's like a 65-35. I think there's a good over one third of a chance that or uh, uh, one third percent chance that Grievous could lose this fight easily. There's a, at least a third chance or a 30 percent chance. Uh, but if you're going to ask me who's going to win the majority, I think it's going to be Grievous. Let me know what you think in the comments below, though. You think it's Grievous or you think the T-1000 is going to win? Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And as always, if you want us to review something, put in the comments below. Let us know. We'll do a review of it at some point. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.